Welcome, my name is Shane and this is my first post on the studio. Today, I'm going to be looking at a bunch of anamorphic lenses. This weekend, I have been playing with a bunch of anamorphic lenses. Why have I been doing that? Well, I recently picked up this Great Joy 16mm T 2.9 1.8x anamorphic lens. It comes in two parts, the 16mm 1.33x lens and then a 1.35x anamorphic adapter. You put them together, you get a 1.8x squeeze. It is a full frame lens. I've currently got it on the Panasonic S5, shooting 16x9 5.9k B-RAW on the Blackmagic 5-inch video assist. 60mm on an anamorphic lens is pretty wide. It squeezes the image so when you are trying to deliver a scope image you no longer have to crop the top and bottom off you rather if you're shooting 16 by 9 of course crop the sides off and that means that your 60 millimeter lens is actually giving you something more like a 40 millimeter lens in terms of your top and bottom field of view I picked up the Great Joy because it seemed like a pretty cool option for someone like myself to pick up an anamorphic lens. It uh, was relatively affordable compared to the competition and in playing with this I started to wonder what that would look like compared to the anamorphic lenses available for hire in Perth. Now here at the studio we've often used the PNS Technic Evolution Cowers. These are available location equipment. They're just beautiful lenses. A little further down the line uh, Cinemachine picked up this lovely set of Vazens. They're a 1.8x squeeze across the set and they also cover full frame sensors. We were really curious about them, we've already had a look at these but I thought that I'd put them through a couple more tests and lastly we've got the Atlas Orion set B. These are a 2x squeeze and they're courtesy of Raz Rentals. Now personally I'd never used the Atlas Orions, I've seen some tests um, so I was really keen to uh, get them in my hands and have a play with them myself and lastly we have the Siru. This is uh, one courtesy of Raz Rentals and I find the, the Siru is kind of nice. It's a smaller package in total compared to the Great Joy if we put them side to side like that but realistically I find the Great Joy and the Siri compare reasonably well. The Siri is just going to have slightly more restrained anamorphic characteristics because it's only 1.6x. So that's sort of the, the lay of the land in terms of the three three main sets you can get in Perth from uh, Location Equipment, Cinema Machine and Raz Rentals. Now what have I done with the lenses? Well I wanted to see what they looked like with a backlight to see what the flaring would do. I wanted to see uh, how the different focal lengths compared to each other with the tripod at the same place which ended up being roughly over here. And then I wanted to see what each lens would look like if I normalized the shot size framed on our lovely mannequin over here. And I tried to get him just on the top of his head to this belt buckle down here. And in all the tests I tried to focus on the text on the lanyard here. I found that a little bit easier to focus on than this. But I thought that this would still be nice to look at the contrast and chromatic aberration and stuff like that. I have a relatively harsh backlight over him that I've put that to the warmest that the Aperture 300X can go. Then I have these two little lights, one with a blue filter and one with a red filter. I wanted to see how that may or may not affect the flares. And of course we've got all the uh, fairy lights in the background. So I rolled through all the lenses. I even did one test where I had the lenses stationary roughly over here and I rolled the backlight behind our mannequin and saw what that might do to the flares. Now what do I still want to do? I'm going to be trying to go out and get some real life exterior footage. Time is running out so um, we'll see how much I can get done. So just as a quick overview for the lenses again, the Atlas Orions courtesy of Raz Rentals. They've got a very nice build. I kind of dig this orange accent here. You've got very smooth turning focus and uh, iris gears. They're a constant T2 throughout the set, which is kind of cool. And a huge, huge, huge focus throw on these. You can you could just turn that for days. Now over here we have the Vasons. They're smaller than the Atlas Orions and a little bit lighter, which is, you know, appealing. These are 2.8 for the 85 and the 135 and a T2.1 on the 50. The focus throw on these is still pretty long. <laughs> and just a little uh, quirk of the set is that the 85 doesn't actually have any witness marks, uh, but, but the 135 and the 50 do. And then lastly, we've got the uh, PNS Evolutions. They're really actually quite compact as well when you, when you think about it. Except of course for the 135 which is just an absolute bazooka. But then again so is the Vazen I suppose. <laughs> now in contrast the Siru and the Great Joy. The Siru is a smaller lens again. Quite, quite nice uh, aperture throw there. Um, the focus throw on the other hand is a little bit more like a stills lens. Um, and then yeah you got the Great Joy here where because of the way that you have to set this up you don't pull focus off of 
the focus ring, you pull it off of the adapter's focus ring over here. This has got a pr pretty satisfying throw for, for a more affordable lens, and um, yeah, hope you enjoy the video. I'm sorry, allow me to interject. We ended up delaying this video a little bit for two main reasons. One being that we were quite busy. The other one being that uh, we have a new lens to add to the mix. The Great Joy 50mm 1.8x T2.9. I have this one in EF and PL mount. It's interchangeable. I've got the EF mount on now. As we can see, it's got quite a bulbous rear element, so you cannot use it with things like speed boosters. But it is now a native EF mount, which is fantastic. All of the focusing is done internally. Unlike the other Great Joy, it does not have a variable diopter, which means that, like the Siru, you're going to have a different squeeze factor depending on where in the focus throw you are. It's not uncommon, even some of the other lenses have it, but all it means is that if you do want to have a consistent squeeze, you may want to use a diopter. The lens has quite a long focus throw, which is fantastic. And it's quite a lot smaller and lighter than the bigger Great Joy. And as mentioned before, it comes with a PL mount as well as an EF mount, which is fantastic. I just want to give you a bit of a comparison between the two. Now, obviously, the difference between 50mm and 60mm is not going to be that big. I'm truthfully more excited for the 35mm and especially 85mm that Great Joy is going to be bringing out. But, you know, I, I couldn't resist. I'm just going to say sorry for the state of the studio, we are shooting a bunch right now. Um, but I am going to be trying to recreate the test as close as I can under the circumstances to just give you guys a feel for what this lens or how this lens compares to the 60mm. I've so far found that the 50mm has gentler, softer flares. You can get it in a version with orange flares, but I've opted for the blue flare version to match the 60mm. And also because I personally feel from the footage that they've released so far that the blue flares look a little bit gentler and subtler than the, the amber flares, which I prefer. So here is a comparison between the two. We can see that the 60mm is quite a lot larger owing to the fact that it needs the variable diopter up front with an additional squeeze, whereas this one is just a 1.8x anamorphic all-in-one body. And like I say, the, the downside of this one is that it's going to be larger, but the downside of this one is that the squeeze factor is going to change a lot more noticeably than this one. Now, apparently the 50mm is a 1.8x when focusing towards infinity. The closer you focus, apparently it becomes similar to about a 1.64x squeeze. When you compare that to the Siru, apparently when you are focused at infinity, it would be about a 1.6x squeeze. When uh, you are focused close, it is about a 1.4x squeeze, so they say. But like I say, there are ways to work around this. It's not really the focus of our test. Many anamorphic lenses work this way. It's just a design choice. Anyways, back to me.
Thank you.
So yeah, I had a lot of fun this weekend. I hope that you enjoyed uh, this little sneak peek into what sort of looks you can expect to get out of the anamorphic lenses available for hire in Perth, as well as how the cheaper crowdfunded anamorphics uh, may compare to these lenses. And again, a big thanks to Location Equipment for their PNS Evolution Cowers Cinemachine for their Vasons, and of course to Raz Rentals for his Atlas Orions set B, as well as the Siru and an FX3 and an S1H as well. They were all really good sports, and yeah, they're all really keen to help you on your next project. Bye.